Dear friends and family in Christ, beautifully, wonderfully, uniquely created, may God's rich peace and joy dwell within your hearts. Please join me for prayer. Lord, we give thanks to you for the life that you've given us each and every day. We pray, that, we pray that as we live these lives, that we might live them in honor and praise to your name, that we might live our lives walking with you each and every day. Lord, help us to trust you that in the dark times you are there, that in the joyful times you are there, in all times that you are there leading us. May we have this faith and hope that one day we will walk with you in eternal life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Life, it truly is remarkable, isn't it? When you stop to just think for a minute about your life, about the gift that God has given you in life, it's hard to even fathom. I don't know if you think about this very often. Maybe you didn't even know this, but every moment of every day, there are over a trillion, actually several trillion cells working together in your body just so that you can breathe, so you can wake up, so you can brush your teeth, so that you can take out the trash, so you can complain, so that you can celebrate. These cells are constantly working together, and they all have a purpose, and they have a design. Even the cells that make you, allow you to feel pain, there are cells that transfer that message from your hand to your head. There are cells that take it the opposite way. When you feel pain in your heart, when you feel sadness, sending the response to the rest of your body. It truly is amazing when we stop to think about life. And even more than that, life in Christ, life in being God's people. Because we're not merely a sum of our parts, trillions and trillions of cells. We're not just that. But we are those who are uniquely and beautifully and wonderfully made and put together specifically by God. We are those who not one of us is exactly the same. How our DNA, each of us, is uniquely different. And it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing as we think about that and think about the life that God has given us. A life to live each day as His children. Every day. But not a life alone. Our text for this morning is from Genesis chapter 2. And in Genesis chapter 2, right before our reading, we find out that God revealed to Adam all the rest of creation. Before Adam, He named every single one of the creations. But as they came before Him, there was not one, not a single one, that was perfect, a perfect helper and mate for him. So God put Adam to sleep. He took from his side. And Isha, woman literally from man, he made Eve. And I just love the words, and I have to read them again, and if you, you're welcome to read them with me, but the words that Adam said, because as Adam saw Eve, he had gone through the rest of creation. He'd seen every other one of God's create creatures. And he said this, is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Can you imagine the passion and exuberance that Adam must have said that with? Can you imagine the excitement that must have filled his heart? Maybe some of you know that as God said this is very good, Adam probably echoed those words. Maybe some of you, as you stood at the altar before the Lord in church and said those words, I do and heard your spouse say, I do. Maybe as you stood in front of a justice of the peace and said, I do, or heard your spouse say, I do. Even if you stood before Elvis in a wedding chapel and said, I do, and heard those words, you know the joy and passion and excitement that comes in bringing a life together in Christ. And you don't even have to necessarily, well, in marriage is a very beautiful way, but we know that we've been created as beings who enjoy and crave and need community. We are those who come together who in, in lives in Christ and live every day in life with Him. But that's easier said than done, isn't it? Living each day in faith every day is actually a lot harder than it sounds. It should be easy for us, but we are sinful people. We are people who have broken God's law and we are people who have broken relationships. So instead of living every day in faith, we struggle against it, and the world certainly doesn't help. We've exchanged life in Christ for living every day in freedom. Living in freedom every day means that, well, according to the world, freedom from being what God's Word says. Freedom from our parents when we move out of the house and declare freedom. Some spouses declare freedom from that person who is holding them back. Someone for someone better. Freedom is the words of our society. Life and freedom every day is this same message that, well, Satan gave to Adam and Eve in the garden. 
He promised them freedom. Freedom from God. Freedom to live as they wanted to live. Freedom to live like God. But look at what this freedom did. Freedom enslaved God's people, Adam and Eve. Freedom enslaves each one of us. When we try to live in the freedoms of this world, truly it enslaves us not to God, but instead to fear. And so our lives move from faith in every day with God to freedom every day in God to fear every day. And how many of us know that fear? We see the moral chaos around us and it produces fear. We see the broken relationships and experience the broken relationships in our lives. And how much fear does that produce? We look at our children and we want what's best for them. But we fear that they'll get into the wrong crowd. Our children look and they say, well, I fear I won't fit in. Maybe some of you as grandparents, you fear that you'll become useless and unappreciated. You fear that there will be no further purpose. You know, this is a promised freedom that the devil gives us. Instead, produces this fear, this anguish, and this hurt. And even worse than that, that fear reminds us of our failures. You know, supposedly this freedom from God is supposed to give us joy and make us live our lives to the fullest, but instead it shows us our failures. It shows us the ways that we have broken God's law. So instead of living in faith every day, we live in failure every day. Failure to keep God's Word. Failure to do what we're supposed to do. Failure in our relationships. Failures in our families. Failures in our jobs. And we don't like those failures. We don't want anybody to see them, do we? We'd like them to be completely covered over so that no one else can recognize them. And so we try to cover up those failures. We try to hide those failures. We try to make it look as though we are living in faith perfectly every day even to our fellow Christians. But the truth is, is those failures cannot be hidden. I'm reminded of King David. King David, and many of you know this, he was a man after the heart of God, but you know, he failed as well. In fact, he failed in one of his cover-ups. Maybe you guys are remembering the story of David and Bathsheba. It's hard to forget it. It's one of the ones that you hear year after year in Sunday school. But David, he was out on looking over Jerusalem one evening. And he saw Bathsheba from his window. And he immediately had her brought to him. And she capitulated to his lustful desires. What could she do? He was the king. He was powerful. He could have held her life in his hands. So she capitulated to his lustful desires. Very next thing, she turns up pregnant. Now, I don't know why David didn't think this was going to happen, but that's usually what happens. And she turns up pregnant, and so David immediately goes into cover-up mode. How am I going to fix this situation? So he calls in Uriah from the battlefield, and he says to Uriah, go, celebrate with your wife. Have union with her. Uriah, he is a faithful man. He's made a commitment. He made a commitment to God. He made a commitment to the soldiers who serve with him and the soldiers who serve under him. He made a commitment to Israel to defend his nation. And so even though he loved his wife, he was not going to break the commitment. So David had to move on to plan B. Cover up too. And so he sent Uriah back out. Put to death almost immediately as he was in the fiercest place of battle. David immediately married Bathsheba. Covered up their indiscretions. He thought he was free and in the clear, right? Wrong. Because although we can cover up things from our spouses, from our children, from our families, from our bosses, we can't cover up things from God. David could not cover up things before God. God could see right into his failure, the failures of heart as if it was laid out bare. And so God sent to him Nathan. Many of you remember this. and It's this really heart-wrenching parable that Nathan tells to David about how this man, this rich man who had flocks and herds, who had more money than he knew what to do with, how he stole the poor man's lamb. You remember the poor man who he had the lamb who would eat right out of his hand, who slept in bed next to him with, along with his children. David, he heard this parable and he just was furious. Nathan said, it's you, David. 
And David realized that his sin was not covered up. He realized that God saw his sin. And, and it's so true, and many of us know this too. We know the guilt and shame of our failures being brought before God. We know it and we hate to see it, but it is when we bring those failures before God that we can know His forgiveness. That we can know how to live, every, live in forgiveness every day. Because so often, we try to cover those things up. It compounds. It's like carrying a trash bag around behind us. And God, He takes that trash bag and He nails it to the cross. Not only does He take our sin, but He takes our shame. Instead of our sins being covered up with our pitiful cover-ups, He covers them completely with His blood, the blood of Jesus, when He forgives our sins. So that we can live freedom, live freely, truly free in our lives today. Now David, he had that guilt and that shame. And some guilt, it's a good thing. Because guilt on our hearts, it reminds us of what God's law does. It means the law is working. And look at how it worked in David's life. He admitted his sin and he confessed his sin. And so we have a beautiful Psalm 51 that came about from that confession. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Those words came about from David as he confessed his sin. And how true we know that that confession before the Lord, how we, we are set free from the guilt and that shame. Sometimes Satan, he tries to take that guilt and shame though and use it in an ugly way and twist it as he often does with God's gifts. Because that guilt is just a recognition of God's law. But Satan, he'll turn it. And many of you, you know the weight of sin that you've committed in the past. Things that you still remember even though you did it when you were 3 years old or 11 years old or whatever it might be. And he works on you there. He makes you ask the question, how could God forgive you? How could God forgive you for this? Why would He want to forgive you? Why would He want you as His son or His daughter? And so He turns that guilt and twists it and makes it shameful. And drives us to those cover-ups. And that's why we need to go to the cross each and every time. That's why we need to go to the cross with our sins because those cover-ups will never bring freedom, but only forgiveness will bring true freedom in Christ. Only when we live in forgiveness every day will we know life in freedom every day. Freedom to live as God's people. Freedom to live not as though the law is a weight, but as our guide and the will for our lives. And so it produces life in faith every day. Our faith lives... That mean that it involves our living out our God's commands for us. That involves our living out His mission and His desire. That involves us seeing that the community that we have of faith is meant to be nurtured and strengthened. That we are meant to share and care for each other. But our community is not merely kept to these walls, but our community is all around us as well. That we are meant to see the mission field out there. That there are people who are in need of being set free from the weight of sin and shame. That there are people who need to be set free from that life of failure and know the great joy of being God's children. You know, when we think about our lives together in Christ, we hopefully you remember that Paul more than one time refers to us as a body. He refers to us as a body. And if one part hurts, the whole body hurts. When one part rejoices, the whole body is meant to celebrate. That is how it is meant to be as we are God's people on earth. As we live in faith every day together. We are meant to live out the joys and the sorrows together. We are meant to re reach down and help someone who is hurting. We are meant to celebrate when our friends, our family are rejoicing. And we are meant to carry that joy into our communities. To show other people that the body of Christ, it's, it's made up of all sorts of people. It's not just the old, it's not just the young. It's not just the weak or not just the strong. But it's made up of people from every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. The body of Christ is made up of, of every part. Paul says it, that although some parts are not as well seen, but they are important parts. And every part of the body of Christ needs to be cared for. Every part of the body of Christ needs to be reached out. Even if they don't speak the same language we do whether they speak English or Spanish or German or Latin or, or Swahili, we're meant to share God's love. 
we're meant to share with them faith every day in Christ. May God bless you as you live in faith every day, knowing that you are set free by God's forgiveness, knowing that he has taken away your failures and your fear and made you his own. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that we have that precious gift of faith. We pray that we live our lives each day reflecting on the joy that we have to knowing that we are your creation, that you have uniquely, wonderfully, and beautifully made each of us. Help us to live out our faith in, in the words that we say and the actions that we do. Help us to live out our faith in the way that we treat one another. Help us to live out our faith knowing that with the hope and trust that you are preparing even now a place for us with you forever. Lord, we give thanks to you for the life we have. May our lives reflect your love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.